Many thanks for joining us on Core Digest Extra this Saturday, 18th of August, 2018. We are talking about the Nigerian polity matters arising. A lot is going on at this time. You look ahead to 2019, you think about the elections, you think about what is going on regarding preparations for the election. This week, the INEC chairman, Mahmoud Yakobo, met with uh, uh, committees well, both the House of Representatives and the Senate talking about the budget for the 2019 elections. Remember that's been a subject of discuss in the recent past. And uh, so people have been expressing concerns and fears. Could this have an effect on the forthcoming elections? But the Anak chairman has come to say, okay, regardless of the delay in the passage of that election budget, the dates for the elections remain sacrosanct. They will not be changed. And uh, the elections would hold that on one hand on another hand uh, the gale of the faction is still on and then of course growing calls for the impeachment of certain players certain defectors and that matter on uh, elsewhere you want to talk about the freedom of the press and uh, what some journalists have been facing in recent past regarding their stories and how you know the impacts the reaction those have been drawing in the society also talk about uh, security talk about the economy there is really so much happening so let's just really touch on them as much as we can this morning i have with me in the studio justice Uwebu, a human rights lawyer a legal practitioner thank you very much justice for joining us today. thank you it is my pleasure once more all right when you look around at the polity <clears throat> what really gets you concerned well, uh, if I tell you the truth, um, I am so concerned because um, I felt that um, by now we should have been uh, um, operating on the principle of geometric progression. But unfortunately, <clears throat> uh, what we are getting is a, a, a lot of diminishing returns because um, I've not seen anything to say we have stepped up at all because professor Rishu, one of our legal jurors said that the law is to harmonize with the society the implication of that is that as the society grows the law grows alongside with the society and that is why it is said that development is advancement. By now, we are supposed to have advanced <clears throat> more than this. Um, for example, if you look at the First Republic, the Second Republic, when you draw inference from there, coming down to 1999, democracy period, till now, uh, we, 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 we are going back. In fact, those era i will say is even better than now we've been battling with this issue of corruption issue of uh, not complying uh simplicity and strictly senso with the electoral rules and guidelines but what we are seeing now we have seen an introduction of another worst form of electoral malpractices which is vote buying we saw it play down in a kitty. Unfortunately, the players from the footages we saw, reports, both the security agents, everybody, they were there. All these things are happening. Now it's no longer in the first place. Tell me the reason why the rule says campaign stops at the eve of the election. And still on the day of the election, people are still conversing for votes. To the extent of carrying it to the pulling books or pulling units, paying money for the votes, making sure that they see your, your, where you voted, somehow you raise it up, they are satisfied that you voted for them before they give you the money. I don't know where we are going. I don't know where our politicians has learned this. I don't know, you know, whether we actually have the interest of Nigeria at hand. Because if you have the interests of the country at hand, there are certain things you will not do. 
let me tell you the truth. Me, as a person, if I come out for any elective position tomorrow and I discover that the people are not ready to carry me along or to vote for me, I will retreat. It's not a due or die affair. But if I insist it must be me, which means I have an ulterior motive. Okay, let's look at the gill of distractions <clears throat> going on across the country today. What do you make of it? Well, the truth is this. Um, it is not the first time it's happening. It's not the second time, not the third time. And it's not going to be the last time. And that is why when APC started making noise and all the rest, I keep on laughing. If you remember, I was in this forum one day where I was discussing with one of my friends. And I, in fact, he was provoked when I said, why is APC making noise now? In 2014, let me also make reference to that. So 15, when some members of PDP defected from PDP to APC, the APC members and spokesmen called them heroes of democracy. The same people you called heroes of democracy a few years ago has done the same thing they did to PDP to you. You are not saying that they are irresponsible. It's so... Where do you get that? Is okay, what? So, what happened? The incident of 2014 stroke 2015 was it uh, legally correct? Was it legally right? Let me tell you one thing many people defected, both people at the National Assembly and people at the executive arm um, and other uh, politicians. Was there action at that time? Justified? No, def definitely. What, what, you see, what you should be asking is it, do they have the right? to belong to any party of their choice or any association of their choice. And because we also and the answer know, is yes. Now, the reason is, you know, you're a legal practitioner, and we have heard of the condition given by the Constitution for which people can move from one party to the other. No people. That's con that, that, that provision. That no, no, okay. that provision what, what, what talks it, about uh, the National Assembly. Okay. You understand? He okay. said the caveat there is that if there is a division, if there is a division, in the party that brought them in okay. that was one of the one, 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 i think the major the major provision okay, so putting that into there. consideration the defections between 2014 and 2015 was there what did you call it now division yes in yes the yes there, there was there was so it means that the, the move of those lawmakers from one party to the other was just yes because remember as of 2014 so 2015 there was this uh, new pdp Okay. If you remember, headed by, I've forgotten his name, that, you know, they, they formed a parallel party structure. Okay. And then, quote and unquote, that was why the members in National Assembly then said, well, there is a division in the party. Because of that, we are now leaving the party to APC. Let's now turn to now, the discussions in 2018. Yeah, the same thing, yeah, same, uh, yeah, rather, the same thing has happened again now. Okay. So remember, is that division in the yeah, remember, yeah, remember that is Aru APC now. Being headed by one senator, I've forgotten his name. They have their own structure. They have their own membership from uh, national to zonal states and local government. So the question you should be asking now. But I know that is, the APC has questions. It is immaterial, but as at that time, PDP also, also came out to say there was no division. But you can't say there's no division. These people are members of your party. So you believe the defection Definitely, uh, yes. It, yes, it's justified by the, by the, by the law. Okay. Uh, according to law, uh, is there a provision that it is the majority party that you know, brings forward the speaker no, no, or no. There's not, there's nothing like that. I think, of the assembly. No, no, no. There's nothing like that. If you go to the constitution, I think section 50, you come down. You know, talked about the national assembly. He said that the de the speaker, the president, and the deputy president and the uh, deputy president of the senate, deputy president of the senate, the speaker. And the deputy speaker of the Senate shall be elected, and other principal officers shall be elected within amongst themselves. He did not say within among the party. But what place is this? Because a part, one particular party will always be a majority. So most times you will not see that the party in majority will always produce the Senate president or the speaker. 
because there is provision for a, a majority leader in the house yeah, yes. or in the assembly yeah, it, it, and a minority that leader one is immaterial that one is immaterial for the post of the president of the senate the deputy and speaker the speaker the you see definitely you are you will not expect somebody from the minority to win except except if that person had you know lobbied some members of the other party that is a majority to vote for him it is an in-house thing let me tell you the legislative arm of government is one of the arms of government we have three arms of government the executive legislature and judiciary they have its own principles mechanisms and machineries to operate they are independent on their own so they have the procedure to do things and the laws in place that provides it right and when in the in this case as we have it now one of the principal officers like now the senate president moves from his party which you know uh, on which he was elected and which threw him up as uh senate president no and now he's no left no that party. no he, he, listen that you see that that is the problem so explain it, it, it is not the party that threw him up as the senate president what, no it is the members up? of the senate that threw him up and voted him as the senate president he has nothing to do with the party. Understand what? Understand the law. So you're saying that according to law, he can maintain his position as definitely, the president of the definitely, Senate. definitely. If the members of the of that house decides we want this person, the vote of where he's coming from. Okay, let me ask you a question. On the day of the election, are the Senate's president, the deputy, the speaker, and the deputy speaker? Did they invite APC members from outside to come and vote? Did they? Did they invite all Nigerians to come and vote? The only people that have the right to cast their vote on that day are the members of the National Assembly, either the Senate or the House of Reps. Simple. They can decide to, put, to choose any person. But as it is today now, some members of the hallowed chamber of uh, the Red Chamber including uh, party stalwarts, including the national chairman of the APC. Many people have been calling for the impeachment of the Senate president. Because, the because they don't know what is democracy. Let they me, don't know what is democracy. They, they don't know. They don't know. If going by the definition of the simple definition of democracy, government of the people, by the people and for the people, the people in the National Assembly have taken their decision. So you don't have right to influence them. In the first place, what is the business of the APC chairman with the National Assembly? He has the party. He should be concerned about whatever no, goes on no, within no, his party. You see where we are having problem in Shouldn't Nigeria? Shouldn't he be bothered about what goes on within I'm his, coming. the party that I'm he coming. has? You see, that's what I'm saying. You see why we are having problem with in, in Nigeria? We believe in a politics of winner takes all. It must be me, it must be us. That is the problem. Let me tell you, my sister. If you have a proactive leadership, the president is not supposed to be interested in what happens in the Senate, what happens in National Assembly. Yet, what he should be interested in is let there be synergy, cooperation between the executive and the legislatures. Remember, remember, that the theory of separation of power in the first place, propounded by Montesquieu, Simplicita, said that it is for it to serve as a check and balance to each other, as a watchdog to each other, so that there will not be tyranny to avoid tyranny. And what is tyranny? Abuse of power. So the problem is this. We embrace democracy. We embrace the rules. We embrace the doctrines and the theories, but we don't want to practice it, practice it the way it should be. That is the problem we're having. And let me tell you another major problem today is that because of the enormous powers the executive in this country, they have, both at the national and the state levels, they now see the other two arms of government, which is the legislature, and the judiciary as a department 
or as a part of the executive. They now want to be dictating to the legislators and the judiciary what to do in order to suit them. That is where there is a disconnect. And it cannot work that way. Not until you remember and understand the three organs of government that must work separately, that must work separately in a democratic setup for the rule of law. You can never get it right. But it's not only the party now. It's not only the executive members of the legislature themselves. Some of them are calling for the impeachment or the resignation of the it, 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 Yes, everybody has his or her own opinion. Let me tell you, even since uh, Saraki became the Senate president, it's not everybody in the, Senate, in the floor of the Senate that voted for him. It's not everybody. Yeah, there are no two ways about it. So for those of them that did not vote for him, or remember that he also had rivals before the election. There were people that wanted to be the Senate president before him. And so those people will also be praying, let there be one problem or the other, let them see whether they can have a chance. You remember in Nigeria, was it not uh, how many years ago that we had four Senate presidents or three Senate presidents in four years? So you see where politics is being played, forgetting the issue on ground. My dear, let me tell you the truth. I don't need to be the senior president for me to do what I am supposed to do and for my people, for my constituency to be happy with me. I don't need it. All right. Now, a number of people have blamed the National Assembly for the delay in the passage of the 2019 elections budget. That is a problem. What, what aspect of it is a problem? That is politics. Once there is no synergy, between the executive and legislature, that is what you get. You see, let me tell you one thing. In any responsive government, there should be, you know, an understanding. Because the, the executive and the legislative arm of the government in every country are the key pillars of the government in every setup. And there has to be this interface. Remember, that is why the president has an, a personal advisor on National Assembly matters who is supposed to be interfacing with the National Assembly, Assembly members on issues and all the rest. But we should also understand and know the fact that the National Assembly on its own also has the duties and the omnibus provisions what we call oversight functions, the ones that are not stated, to also look into the activities of the executive to know whether actually what they are doing is right or not. And where they want to go, there's a, be a mistake, they will correct them. It doesn't need to fight unnecessarily, no. But once there is that no synergy, once you bring politics into it from the onset, if you remember, this National Assembly from the first day of Saraki, imagine as the senior president that having issues. And you now ask yourself a question. Since that time till now, issues have been coming up. Saraki, no Saraki, Ekodemad, no Ekodemad. You have not gotten anything. Nigeria is not moving forward. We, we, we are leaving the normal things we are supposed to do in this country and focusing on issues that do not benefit the masses. Look at all the killings in Nigeria. Uh, but don't you think this actually benefits the masses? I'm talking about the election now because uh, it is a democracy. And uh, listen, uh, ele we know election, that elections hold election every just four years. Election is just coming. It's just coming. Yes, and it's I am telling vote, you from the inception. I am telling you from the inception of this government. I'm not. You see, we are looking at things that has happened before now. That's what I'm trying to say. There's no executive member, we call it APC chairman, PDP chairman, ABGA chairman, or whatever, that do not have security in their house. Because already they are entitled to security. So most of them are, is the APC, current APC chairman now, not a former uh, head, uh, 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 an S uh, governor of a state. He's entitled to security and all the rights. So nobody is talking about all these things. Now election is forthcoming and all the rights. All these things are supposed to have been synergized, done earlier before now. Proposal sends, appropriation bill sends for the 
money to be released and all the rest. And remember, it is also the duty of the National Assembly to vet and look at this money we are talking about holistically to know whether this money is actually good to be released, the amount you are talking about and all the rest. Because we are talking about a huge amount of money. Some states have done their elections and all the rest. Now, with the current, in fact, I am expecting the National Assembly to reconvene and call the INEC chairman for questioning. Well, actually, the committee has met with him, uh, with the INEC chairman. And the one thing when the Senate committee did meet with him, they mentioned that, okay, so this has opened the way now for, you know, the National Assembly to reconvene so that the committee of the whole can now consider, you know, the recommendations. I, I wouldn't even want it to committee. end at the committee stage. I want it to be an open hello uh, meeting. Because well, definitely. You know, that, 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 that's what I was also saying. Because the INEC, the Senate INEC chairman now, uh, committee chairman, did mention that, okay, now the committee has met, despite the fact that they're on recess, and that has opened the way, because a number of people have been calling for the reconvening of the National Assembly. So he said that has opened the way, and so, of course, it will now be necessary for the committee of the whole to look at whatever they've come up with. Yeah, uh, the, the, I think they can reconvene now. Uh, mainly because of this, and a lot of questions needs to be answered by the by the chairman of INEC. Uh, you know, uh, what looking, are some of the questions? Yeah, looking at the fallout of few elections that have been concluded, the shortfalls, the complaints, and all the wrecks. Because all these things needs to be tidied up. If not, there'll be problem in 2019. Because you can't you can't keep quiet. You can't you can't you can't. Pretend as if you did not see these things. But one thing is that the INEC chairman, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, has assured that the election date will not change despite the delay in the We're not talking the about election date. Isn't this, listen, listen to me. We're not talking about election date. I am one of the people that believe that we must get it right, no matter how long it takes us. No, no, let, no, 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 no. Let's forget. Let's just do it. Let's just do it. No. We'll keep on going down the drain. We must get it right once and for all. Once we get it down right, it will serve. The president will be there. So it's not a matter of election date being changed or not being changed. After all, in 2014, election date was changed, I think, two times. Election still held, and uh, 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 May was still visible, handover date. So it doesn't matter. There are issues to be discussed and to be trashed before 2019 election. That's what I'm saying. That you shift the election for one week or two weeks. I don't see any any any, any, any thing bad. All right. Okay, so you think the election date can actually be shifted? From the way I'm looking at it, it may. But what we are saying is that election must be done and concluded and a handover take place the day it's supposed to take place. Because if it is extended, it means that and a lot of people are actually against the extension. No, no, no. Some, did, did that not extend the election in 2014? Uh, did, it, did it affect the handover? Understand what I'm trying to say. So let, let them not use this issue of uh, date, date, date and confuse Nigerians. No. Get things right. All right. When the National Assembly uh, adjourned for two months, that was July the 25th. Yes, and they adjourned by two months. So originally they had to reconvene on uh, September maybe 24th or also uh, 25th. How do you see that that a break? Well, I think the, it was not a, a unilateral decision. It was a decision of the, the members of the National Assembly. I am not a member, so they know the reason why they have to. But the truth I know, and for all I know is that they can still reconvene if there are issues or emergencies. So I do think you believe we have issues and emergencies? Yeah, yeah, we do. We do. Especially the 2019 election is coming up. We don't really have much time. So do you call Especially the issue of uh, uh, release of money and all the rest. Yes, I, I, I support the fact that they should reconvene and look at critical issues. The money is not even the, the, the problem there. We have money. Okay, this country will have the money. All right, but now that the issue of impeachment is also very high on people's... Uh, I, I, I believe it will not fly. I think people that are talking about these things are just wasting time. Because one, now tell me what good is living do to us. We we'll have less than how many months to election for this National Assembly to even wind up. So wh wh why are we creating issues out of nothing? 
If you, if you see, uh, Saraki says something that these people are enemies of democracy. I think I agree with him. We should be able to. Let me tell you one thing. <laughs> Freedom comes by struggle. And for there to be sanity in any system, anywhere, there must be sacrifice. We must be able to make this sacrifice.